Good morning. Good uh, morning. Hi. To the first, the first um, session of Saturday in the Fourth World Congress of Psychotherapy. Uh, the common theme in this session is that uh, both speakers uh, are using applications which involve walking with your smartphone. Um, yep. And um, my name is David Upton. I'm a member of the Congress organising team. Uh, with me is Sebastian H. W., who is an artist based in Coventry. Um, Sebastian is working on a system called uh, uh, CQF, was it? Correct, Mas yeah. Carpe Quantum Fatum. Ah, a Latin is teased. We've got real carpe. <laughs> <A Latin. laughs> and uh, and uh, my system is called Walking with Data. And what we're proposing to do uh, is that Sebastian will start off by introducing himself, explaining a bit about himself, and then talking about his, his CQF system. And he'll do that for about I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. Uh, and then I'll talk about my system. Um, you can, uh, if, if you're watching us on Facebook or I think on YouTube, you can make comments, which we will see, I believe. Uh, and so you can ask us questions at any time and please feel free to do so. Okay, Sebastian, would you like to kick off? Tell us a bit about yourself, first of all. Sure, um, so my name is Sebastian um, and I'm a live artist, uh, independent live artist. I've just graduated from the uh, MA Contemporary Performance Practice at UEL, University of East London. Um, and I'm interested in, the things I'm most interested in as an artist are memory, bodies, participation, technology, and um, identity. And that kind of informs a lot of the work that I've, I've made. Um, and during lockdown, I started using this uh, app called Randonautica. Um, which gained lots of notoriety within the kind of uh, TikTok social media sphere, um, where some teenagers uh, use this app, uh, which sends people to quantumly random, randomly generated locations um, near where they live. And they, but you have to set an intention. Um, and the idea is that they set the intention for travel and they got sent to a pier near where they lived and they found a suitcase uh, full of human remains. Um, and this is a documented story uh, you can read about. It. It's, it's, an open, it's still an open case. They've discovered who the people are, but not, um, not the perpetrator. Um, but what's interesting is how, from something that seems to be kind of um, meaningless or kind of throwaway uh, and kind of used by this new generation, they um, stumbled into something that was very real. Uh, so people started questioning, what is this app? What is, uh, what is this kind of uh, technology that they're using? Is this a dark web? Um, and so I started doing my own research and then I re and it realized that it's much more about uh, psychology um, than it is about uh, it being connected to anything more sinister. Um, and so from that, I then used an older version of this app, which is available on Telegram, which is a kind of like a WhatsApp messaging service. And to kind of build my own kind of scripts about uh, different people going out for walks um, and discovering different things in their local area. Uh, and it's a game. So it's an alternative reality game whereby you are a player within it and your choices in the conversation you have with me um, back at the laboratory changes the kind of the, the script or the kind of direction in which you're heading towards understanding more about what the... Um, what the research is and what your personal uh, views about destiny and fate, synchronicity and coincidence have. Um, uh, and, you, and you do it through walking. That's what um, kind of being part of the, being part of here, the Congress is really interesting to kind of be able to focus more into like why is walking so important to the process of yeah. building mm -hmm. um, synchronicity. Um, yeah, and and what, what your smartphone shows you is actually where to go next, mm -hmm. isn't it? I'm here. Yes. Um, and your smartphone then says go here and it gives you what coordinates which then show up on a, on a Google map or something like that. Yeah, so it kind of creates, uh, it gives you kind of quite a lot of jargon, which I think is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps a little bit off-putting. So it gives you lots of kind of data that probably means a lot to the people at the quantum physics lab. Um, mm -hmm. but f and I'm still interested in how, how, it, how the company turned the data from the physics lab into GPS coordinates, because that feels mm -hmm. very um, unknown. Uh, very mm. kind of magical. Um, mm. Um, mm. So yeah, all you get is a kind of uh, Google Map view of the point, a little marker, and then you can then open up in directions, which then sends you either through Google Maps or something else or another direction mm. service. 
um, to walk Tim Waters has just posted a comment saying there have been many videos about Random Nautica in, in recent months and it's mm -hmm. gone viral. And that, indeed, it's yes. true. I a few of them, but you're actually adding something to this system, are you, with your, your, oh, uh -oh. your notion of a. a Hello? Still there? Hi there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, my, my stream just uh, slowed down a little bit, so I got a very drawn yes. out version. <laughs> just repeat what you said. <laughs> Um, you're, I mean, there's, there's been a lot of uh, videos about Random Nautica in recent months, and it, it, it's gone viral. But are you actually adding something in your system to Random Nautica? You're, you're adding the notion of a game where people are getting in touch with you. Yes. Um, so I think I'm adding kind of more interest in creating a kind of backstory um, right. to what the what the kind of the, what the physics is, or kind of who the physicians are that have um, developed this technology. Uh, and I'm kind of trying to focus in more on the idea of intention because that feels very kind of lost within the app. Um, and I think mm -hmm. it simply says state your intention or focus on your intention mm -hmm. rather than mm -hmm. that being something of interest or something that needs more depth. So I thought, so that's kind of the, that was the departure point. I realized that's what's lacking in the, the app um, mm -hmm. at the minute. And how can I as an artist and as a theater maker as well um, bring that, further for people who use it um, and then from then it started kind of just snowboarding. and I, I realized oh there's a whole uh, experience and a whole world you can build around um, mm -hmm. who these people are and what people are looking for um, in this yeah so if I decide to take part in in, in your um, mm -hmm. app um, during this conference what what do I do that you're running it at a specific time are you uh, it's kind of more on demand, I think, right. um, okay. not knowing how many people would be interested um, of course, yes. and the mechanics of how it would work. I decided to just have a kind of operating hours, a bit like a shop, so you can just drop right. in, yeah. Yeah. come to the desk, which is me, um, mm -hmm. and I'll kind of start you off on, a, on the process of how, mm -hmm. how it works. Um, so the best way to get in contact is to email me, uh, email the lab right. at uh, carpe.quantum.fatum at gmail.com. Right. Um, and this is all there, I will the documentation, isn't it? I Sorry. think it, yes. this is all. Yeah, it's all there. Yes, yes good. Yeah. Good. Um, uh, so uh, I email you, and the captain's there. And you email me, and then I get back to you saying thank you very much for uh, joining our laboratory mm -hmm. as a research participant. Um, I'd like to guide you through some int introductory questions uh, to understand more about kind of your um, opinion on the the different themes that our research is about. And then you get sent to um, invited to join a Telegram conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. And Telegram is a kind is like a WhatsApp um, instant messaging service. Right. Right. Um, and what's great is that on that service there is this older version of the the Random Nautica app, which exists as a kind of a chat a chat bot. Um, right. So it means you can move between the chat bot and my conversation quite seamlessly, rather than having to go in of one application and out into another. Um, mm. And then I ask you to go on a few walks around where you live uh, and then to kind of report back on these walks through photo, video, audio. Um, and then from that, I kind of analyze it back at the lab. And then we'd start a conversation about what uh, about your walk and what you found. Um, okay. So it's kind of like quite one on one, um, which I think works quite well for the kind of messaging service uh, world. Because I wanted that kind of not kind of intimacy, but like interpersonality between yourself as a player and me as a kind of game master mm. quote unquote mm. um mm. you, you mentioned telegram is quite important. Mm. sorry you mentioned telegram it was just similar to whatsapp do, do i have to open an account with telegram first or can i just log on uh you do have to join um you you have to have a phone number i was hoping there was a way you could avoid not having a phone number um uh, so you need a phone number and then you create a user account um, I, you can also do the experience just through email. I don't think you get the full amount, and I think it's a bit slower. But I'm curious right. to see. One of the first questions is, do you have a smartphone that you know, has a yeah. is capable of data roaming? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that most people will have, but there is a way of doing it without, where you can just have an email conversation with myself. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, oh, and also there is a map. There's a, a kind of an online map. Um, that I'm building of people's content that we've made during the walks um, that people can just simply go and view, um, which is quite useful for people who don't necessarily want to play but want to see the outcome of the, the game. Yeah. 
So if I join your 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 system and I take a photograph and post it, that will appear on your online yep. map. Brilliant. Yes. Yeah. That'll be great. I'm smoothing through all the technical technicalities of this, but um, <laughs> it will one way or another it will it will appear. Mm. How did you find the system in the first place? I mean, what what made you notice it? What made you be interested in it? Uh, in Telegram or the kind of the um... the the, the, the random. Not, not yeah, so I think I, oh, <clears throat> in Random Auto itself, yeah, I was, um, over lockdown, I started watching a lot of YouTube. Uh, as someone who doesn't own a, a TV license, I kind of end up watching lots um, uh, through other systems. And I think it's through that, you know, how, who knows how all these algorithms work, but it suggested me something uh, or maybe also played something. And then I was like, wow, what is this kind of, um, and I think, I was kind of very drawn into kind of the sensationalism I think that YouTube does. Um, but I think being quite critical, I thought, well, what is, what is this? What? And then I started to investigate further. Because I think on YouTube, there's lots of the sensational, the more sensational stories of using this app. Um, but, uh, and then having kind of used it myself, I realized actually how much, how little the actual, in the kind of the iceberg of um, people's experiences, most of what's under the water is all the kind of banal or benign um, mm. walk that people will take on that uh, mm. people are not going to talk about because they don't find them interesting or yes, they don't yes. see that as being part of the process towards drawing uh, synchronicity. Yes. I must admit, when I, when I looked at the, uh, the, the Random Nautica sites and, and, and uh, social media, some of the, the the stories were were almost religious in their you know their mm. description. This, this changed my life forever. I went along and I found this. You're not guaranteeing as a suitcase of bones, presumably. In, in this no, unfortunately, I can't. Um, <laughs> as much as I, I would love to, I wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think, <laughs> but who knows? I mean, this is what I'm interested. In. What's really great about doing it, doing this as part of the um, the online congress, is the fact that we can have <clears> from all over the world. Um, Mm. Uh, so I'm really curious to see who will get in touch and kind mm. of their how they represent their walk and like the place where they live mm. um, <clears> through <throat> just media through this kind mm. of like interface of um, mm. uh, of kind of instant instant communication. Mm. Am, am I correct in saying that there is there is a slight health and safety problem with the system in that it recommends that you go somewhere. But it, it, that's just purely a random thing. And it, it may happen to be the middle of the railway track or something like that. Uh, so if you're using yeah. this, you have to use your common sense. Um, exactly, yeah. And I think I think that's also quite interesting in how that has... <laughs> I think because a, a lot of the people who've used Random Nautica um, are definitely a kind of like a younger generation who perhaps are definitely much more uh, kind of gung-ho and will more like mm. take risks than I think kind of perhaps mm. um, people in the <laughs> older generation. Um, mm. And that feels very much part of the kind of the psychology of the app is this idea of the, the it's called the despair meme, which is this idea that um, by going into the unknown, you're already in a heightened sense of being more observant mm. and um, mm. more wary. And mm. then kind of how you, I guess I'm interested in how you as a player have to navigate the choice the, um, the choices you make to decide how far you will go to reach the point um, mm, mm. even if it is inside private property or it's on a mm. you know, dangerous path or it's in the middle of the water often it's funny how a lot of people who've been living near the sea the map will send the the quantum uh, generator could send them to a point far out in the ocean mm. um, so but luckily there's lot you can there, you have lots of like points or like a, ability to choose different mm. um, to keep uh, finding new points, so you could just simply move on to another point. Um, mm. It's it interesting psychology. I mean, this is very much a, a, a map, a, a, a thing about psychology, isn't it? It's not just somebody giving you a random map reference. It, it's about how you react to that, and also how you fit that into a pattern or a story for yourself. Exactly. Um, and I think that, I think within the, like, the world, the, the world that Random Nautica app has made has felt very kind of not, uh, uh, there's a lot more there to be understood. Um, and I think they've just gone with the kind of uh, quasi mysticism of um, uh, quantum mechanics. Um, 
but I think there's more, I think there's definitely something more in there that I think they mm. perhaps have yet mm. to think about. I think they kind of started it just to see the interest. Um, mm. And I think it's because it's blown up. Uh, they've just kind of gone with whatever the kind of narrative they've done for themselves mm. and whatever people are bringing it to, to them. But yes, definitely it's a big, the psychology of it is something I, I'm particularly interested in. There's, we've just had a question in from Satya on Facebook, uh, which said, Sebastian, what are some core concerns or inspirations that drove you to build this app beyond Randonautica? And I, I think you partly answered that, but if, if you care to just respond. Um, yes. So I think it's also, I think for me as an artist and like how I was taught, it was about uh, taking risks and having adventures. Um, I think mm -hmm. that is something mm -hmm. often gets often gets quite lost um, in our everyday lives. Uh, and I think I'm always interested in how live art and theatre can push people mm. a little bit beyond their comfort zone. Um, mm. But then how, but how do we do this now in a world where, well, especially during lockdown, which I think I think also kind of triggered some of the big surge of people using this app, um, was that people really wanted to be sent somewhere different in their neighbourhood. Um, at the time when we could only have like you know, one walk a day, for an hour, um, mm. people got very bored mm. with their usual routes, um, <clears throat> and this really uh, helped them uh, to do that. I, I guess it's, there's a comment of like, do we need do we need an app to be able to send us to a random location? Can't we just mm. go on a derive? Can't we just go on a walk? And it will send us mm. there. Um, but I guess I'm still interested in how the technology can just support us to be able to do that, rather than just be a, yes. a Procesus or something that is, um, yeah. I hope. Yeah, does that make sense? Mm. Some... Tim Waters on Facebook has just said, "Could the use of positive intention negate the sense of fear or unwariness we might have going to new?" Yes, uh, I'm a I'm a definite believer in that. I think every time I've done it with a use the app with a strong kind of um, positive or kind of like wholesome, warming kind of intention, it's always been. Um, either very banal or very, um, mm. or I've found the thing that I've wanted from mm. that. Um, yeah, I think all of the, a lot of the sensational things you see on YouTube are based off people's more, uh, say, negative. I guess I I'm, I'm trying to avoid the kind of like the binaries of positive, positive and negative. Mm. Um, mm. But when people have gone with very uh, sinister or kind of creepy intentions, people seem to kind of use that's mm. when people have these very um, uh, paranormal and otherworldly experiences. Mm, mm, mm. It does seem to be the case, doesn't it, that yeah. um, we, we've become a world that's, that perhaps focuses too much on health and safety. And, you know, on, on the one hand, being an artist does involve taking risks. Um, mm. On the other hand, taking risks is sometimes a silly idea. Um, and it's just yeah. a question of you come down on, on, on the scale. But I could see that, that your... Uh, uh, system is is a, a way of persuading people to take some acceptable risks that they might not otherwise have taken. Yeah, um, yeah. And then to okay. kind of think, um, yeah, and like what the I'm interested in the journey of like what it was like to have that risk um, mm. and what was both like in the moment, but also like afterwards as uh, how do you process that that journey? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so when 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 is your shop open today? You know, you uh, can... shop will be open in the oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, from the evening, um, from about uh, right. six o'clock, um, okay. uh, British Standard Time. Right. So, if people it's want okay. to join, they should email you after six six o'clock today. Yeah, after you can email me um, now, and I'll get back to you over the day. But I guess I'll right. be like actually fully uh, fully available to um, mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. from six o'clock. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, right. We, um, as we've got an hour, yeah. we agreed that we talk for about 20 minutes about your system and then about 20 minutes about my system. Feel free yeah, to please. ask if you want to. Um, yeah. My system came up, well, for two reasons. One, because um, like Sebastian, who's just done a, a, a master's in, in art at uh, um, Queen Mary's, was it, or uh, UEL? Uh, University of East London, yeah, UEL. Right, UEL. Yeah. Um, I'm in the process of doing a, a master's in computational art at Goldsmiths. It's, it's, uh, there's a lot to be said for avoiding people who are doing master's degrees in art. They're all, they're all nutty. But, Absolutely. But, uh, part of the motivation behind this was I had to do a, an end of 
year piece for my degree show. But um, also, I wanted to do something for the um, the Congress. And it, when we when I was planning this, it was it was becoming obvious that we were going to have virtual Congress, and people were not going to be able to go for walks together. Uh, and to my mind, one of the best things about the the, the Congress when it when it happens properly is you meet a lot of people and you go for a lot of walks and they're interesting people, they're nice people. And I began to think, well, how can you sort of substitute that? I mean, can I make your smartphone be an intelligent and amusing companion? Um, um, so what I was trying to do was in, in two things, really. Uh, one was to make the smartphone uh, be more aware and be able to notice things that you didn't. I mean, if you think about it, if you go for a walk with somebody, what happens? Well, they talk to you. They spot things you haven't spotted. They know things you don't know. And they tell you them. And then sometimes they ask questions or they see things in a way that you didn't. Uh, and that expands your perception. And I wondered if, if it was possible to, to make a phone do this. Um, it's, it's going back to, I don't know whether you know, Foucault's idea of technologies of the self, um, which is, it's, uh, Foucault said something that uh, technology of the self uh, which is, uh, sorry, just trying to find this, permit individuals to effect by their own means or with the help of others a certain number of, of operations on their own bodies and souls, thoughts, conduct and way of being, so as to transform themselves in order to attain a certain state of happiness, purity, wisdom, perfection or immortality. I think there's a bit of Gallic uh, irony about the, the immortality bit, but mm -hmm. the idea was to simply to, something that you can do to yourself which transforms your view of life. and. Psychogeography is a perfect example of this. You know, you go for a psychogeographical derive and you come back a slightly different person with a slightly different view of life. Um, and it's one of the factors of this is, is having people to help you and to encourage you. And what I wanted to do was to produce something that would, would expand my own horizons by asking questions or telling me things that I hadn't been aware of. Uh, I'll give you an example, um, magnetic field strengths. Uh, there, there are powerful magnetic fields around the Earth. We all know that. We all know about compasses. But what I didn't know was that they, they, they fluctuate quite dramatically. Um, and they're, they're so powerful that they induce currents in power wires and pipelines, which are strong enough to damage these things. Um, but we're unaware of them. These, these, these dramatic changes happen daily, and we, we're unaware of them. Uh, do they affect us? I don't know. I mean, the, the, the received wisdom is that, that human beings can't feel magnetic fields or magnetic field changes. But on the other hand, I, I came across an article the other day which suggests that dogs can actually sense the Earth's magnetic field. Um, interestingly, and if, if you'll pardon me, the, 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 this was written by some German researchers, or Czech researchers, I think. And they, they, they looked for something that dogs did, which didn't have to be, where the alignment wasn't controlled. Like, I mean, you know, if you feed the dog, its alignment is controlled by where you put the bowl. But something the dog decides to do uh, all on its own is, is, if you pardon me, to crap. And they worked out that when dogs do this, they in fact statistically significantly align themselves with the north-south magnetic axis of the Earth. Um, it, it makes you think two things. One is that there are some people getting a lot of money to do some very strange things as part of their PhD, you know, wandering around Prague with a compass waiting for a dog to well, um, but also the, uh, the other interesting thing is that if dogs can sense these things, uh, can we, you know, in what, in what way might we be aware of something like that? And this is just an example of the sort of thing that you might find, uh, that you might not notice uh, when, when you're walking, but something like this system can, can uh, flash up and show you. What, what actually happens is you log onto it, you download uh, uh, Java, you log onto my website, which uh, is on the literature, you download a, a, a JavaScript file, uh, well, several actually, but we, which then uh, takes over your system uh, and which allows your system to talk to a central server. Uh, it, can ask, it can ask questions, it can have information pushed out to it and all this sort of thing. So that it's producing something which is uh, trying to act as a kind of intelligent companion for you. Um, it's, uh, I mean, our relationship with our machines is a, a very difficult subject because um, obviously um, we're all very worried about surveillance and we're all very worried about Big Brother and 
collecting data and there's all sorts of rules about what data you can and can't collect. Um, this is an artwork, so I haven't taken those too seriously. What I've tried to do is to get around it by saying, when you log on to the system, please, if you want to, give a false name. And I, I must say that the uh, uh, members of uh, uh, attendees at the Congress so far have been very creative in their false names. I particularly like right. Alice in Wonderland. Um, but we've had Michael Knight, we've had Vladimir Lenin, we've had Donald Duck and all sorts of things. Um, the, the only reason I need that is so I can disambiguate, because if, if several people are on the system at the same time, I need to know, you know, this is person A, this is person B, and so on, and that's one way of doing it. Uh, but in fact, you could argue that what I've built is a bugging device, because it is aware of where you are, and various other things that you tell it. Um, but it's not, it's not as bad as putting uh, um, Alexa in your house, which is listening in all the time. Uh, but it's intended to be a friendly thing. It's intended to be a friend that you can take with you uh, and to, to um, view these things not in a sinister light, but, but in a supportive light to make people have a, a, a friendlier attitude towards technology. Uh, and for that reason, I, I've, I've quoted uh, Richard Broutigan's poem. That in fact, if you hit the right button, the system will actually stop you and read it to you. Uh, the one that ends with, uh, all watched over by machines of loving grace. This was written in the 60s when people were much more, uh, didn't know as much about computers and they were much more idealistic about what benefits they might bring to us. Um, and he envisages this world in which we, we, we live a simpler and a more natural life and the computers look after the difficult things for us. And in a way, that's something that I'm sort of trying to achieve in my system. Um, Uh, I'm really curious how how much time we've got. Uh, how you built not not how you built the system of like kind of your um, as in the not the intentions behind it, but the, um, in this idea of like companionship from the phone. Was it? Did you were you mod? How much were you modelling it on a kind of a human, uh, someone that you knew, or a kind of more ideal idealised version of what this companion could be? Um. That's a very good question. I mean, the the uh, it, it, it's it attempts to to understand you. Um, it, I don't know if you've heard of the Big Five personality scale. Um, that's where you, uh, you yes. it, it's used a lot by social scientists. Basically, you try and align people on five uh, uh, spectra. Uh, there's things like uh, the the acronym is Canoe. The C is conscientiousness, or the other extreme, couldn't care less. Um, a is uh, um, how long is this now? N is neuroticism. Uh, are you a relaxed, cheerful person, or do you fly off the handle at the drop of a hat? And all this sort of thing, it, it tries to estimate, it tries to place you on these scales by watching what you do. So if you continually, for instance, uh, press on the something's gone wrong button, uh, then well, either something's gone wrong or you, you're a bit neurotic. <laughs> you know, neurotics are wrong, a bit anxious, uh, and so on. And it tries to do to 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 produce a, a sort of a profile of you, and to adjust um, what you what you get to this profile. This is very rudimentary, and it still needs a lot of testing, which is one of the reasons I'm, I'm glad to be uh, here. Um, you can also set sliders when you go in, saying, "Do you want more or less data? Um, do you find it usable uh, or not usable? Uh, and um, is it talking too much?" Because it <laughs> does talk and uh, I can't unfortunately control the voice. So some of them have a very annoying sort of sim simulated voice, others don't. Um, and if in, incidentally, the, the gender changes when I run it on my smartphone, yeah. it's a man. When I run it on my PC, it, it's a lady. So hey, <laughs> um, and I can't control that. Um, so it, it attempts to, to build up a picture of you and then to, to tailor to a limited extent what it's providing. Uh, and, and the way it's providing it so that it will be something that will, will appeal to you more or, or will not annoy you. Uh, as I say, this is, this is a work in progress. It's at the very early stages. I'd like to take it a lot further. But ultimately, it does seem to me that there's a market, uh, and I use that in a non-commercial sense, that there's, there's a, a need for something which can um, help people to um, counteract loneliness in some respects. Uh, you know, yeah. there are... Uh, a lot of people are lonely and not just because they're having to do solitary derives on, on, because of COVID um, or attend virtual conferences. And it would be nice to feel that you had something that could, could go with you. Um, it, it's just going back to the code. It, it's quite a complex piece of code. 
um, it relies on, um, first of all, on, on JavaScript, uh, and secondly, on a web server, which is which is having a world in the background uh, on, my, on my website, um, and which is talking to you and getting back uh, information from you or about you. Um, and it then it relies on various other things. It relies on sensors on your smartphone, for instance. It, it should be, if your smartphone is aware of where you are, if it has a GPS sensor, it will be sending in over your latitude and longitude. Uh, and the system can read that and it can then, if it knows that there are lots of things it can find out related to your to where you are. It doesn't know that, obviously it can't. So we're in the hands, first of all, of, of whatever system you're using it on. And secondly, it relies quite a lot on external data sources, uh, which are mostly APIs, application programming interfaces on the web. Uh, and these are not the easiest of things to work with because they all have different rules and they can change. And you know, you're you're making another internet connection, and that may or may not work. So sometimes it is, looks for it looks for data, and it's either very slow or it just doesn't come at all. Um, but for instance, uh, one of the things that I find quite amusing, you know, the what three words system. Somebody uh, in the, uh, one of the films last night where every, I think it's three by three meter square in all participating countries has uh, three words because the emergency services worked out that they were fed up who just couldn't understand map coordinates and couldn't tell them where they were. But if you look up what three words on your smartphone, it gives you literally three words. Uh, I forget exactly what it is, but Huddersfield Station is something like, I know mice appears in it, but it's just literally three words chosen at random and it's much easier to pass that on. And it, it is uh, unique in, in, in application terms. Uh, but obviously, we can't look up your what three words unless we know where you are. Um, and, yeah. But if you look up your what three words, the next thing that it does is it will then look up those words in Wikipedia and give you a brief summary of what they mean. And that's intended, really. It doesn't mean anything. I mean, it's, it's a purely random connection. But it's interesting to see what thoughts those might start, you know, if, 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 if right. it relates. In, in Huddersfield Town Square to George's Square in front of the railway station. Um, what does that mean? Does that have any implication? You know, is, is that, does that start any thoughts? Okay. In fact, one thing I'm thinking of doing at some stage is actually uh, mice drip proud. That's Huddersfield. Uh, the, right. the, uh, <laughs> it would be quite nice to produce a poem consisting entirely of a trail of these. Exactly, these, yeah. These. Uh, <laughs> I, I, but that's a bit strange. Anyway, so it, it, it's um, it's important that the system can fail gracefully. There are a lot of occasions when it doesn't get you the information it wants. What I don't want it to do is just stop dead and show an error message. So it just says something like, sorry, can I get it waiting or something. Um, what I've in a way been trying to do is to um, get back in a sense to some of the earlier pioneers of, of computer art, people like Roy Ascot. Uh, who approached it at a time when, when we, you know, we, we've now set up all the channels. We know what computers do because they always do them the same way. And they always do them the same way because that's what we see every time. Can we, in fact, use them in, in, in different ways, challenging ways uh, that people hadn't thought of before? And just to give you an example of a work that I, I really like, um, I don't know if you know uh, a Swiss-German Swiss group called uh, Not Made in Gruppe Bitnik. Um, they... Yep. Uh, they produced a thing called a packet for Mr. Assange. What they actually did when Julian Assange was in the Ecuadorian embassy, they sent him a parcel uh, which actually contained a webcam and a, a Raspberry Pi or something, which was tweeting uh, the pictures from the webcam and had little holes in the side. How this got through embassy security, I do not know. But anyway, they, they posted this thing to him and it tweeted live. And you can see this thing. It spends a lot. It's about took about thirty six hours to get to him. It spends a lot of time inside mailbags, so you can't see anything. But periodically, it appears, and you can see it in the sorting offices, and you can see it uh, actually arriving in the embassy. And then you can see a Sanji opening it, and you know this sort of thing. And that, to me, is 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 taking it. It's taking the imagination and using the systems that exist differently. And that's really the sort of thing that I've been trying to to do in in terms of an artwork. In terms of um, um, psychogeography, this is this is really, I think, it, it's it's an ideal. Um, it, it's a, psychogeography is an ideal opportunity because you get a group of people 
who are working together, who are looking for something new, some or open to something new at least, who are open to this sort of approach. That's that's as far as I've got. I see that. Uh, Some new There's a question here I don't understand from Tim Waters that says it might be a bug, gulp, <laughs> but is it a web page and can other ones do the same? Uh, not sure I understand that. And David S has very kindly reminded me that A in canoe stands for agreeableness. So obviously there are other people who know the system better than I do. It's a simple, uh, I mean, agreeableness, you know, you look at, um, it just puts you on a, on a, on a, a sort of continuum, you know, Disagreeable people are ones who don't care about other people's feelings. Agreeable people, you know, people who are more easy to get on with. It, it's simplistic in a way. And just for example, you can set the sliders um, to say whether you think uh, the, the the system is, is usable or whether you think it's giving you too much data or whether it's talking too much. If you set the sliders at the lowest extreme, so if if, if uh, um, you the agreeableness slider you set it as not at all agreeable you set it on zero then you will get a minus score for agreeableness uh, that that's the sort of it may be not at all usable but some people say it more politely than others and so i'm just trying to build in those kind of subtle things that will enable people to to do it in terms of what you'd actually do if you want to use the system it's open it's available now uh, all you have to do is download it from my website um, to um, in case anybody's worrying about this, what it does is it downloads a um, JavaScript program uh, which sits on your machine. It runs as long as you keep that web page open. If you close that web page, it stops. You'll have to download it again and re-log on. Um, it isn't working all the time. If, if you have your smartphone... Uh, in your pocket, then it will stop working, but it will restart as soon as you open up the screen again, the smartphone wakes up. Um, mm. In terms of, are you, are you downloading a bug? The answer is, well, in one sense, I suppose you are, but it's an easy one to get off because all you have to do is, uh, it, 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 uh, it, what, web, what web browsers do is if they're downloading a fairly long JavaScript file, uh, they cache it and they, they, they store it locally so that next time you go to that site, you don't have to download it again. It's just purely for speed and convenience. Um, so that's the only way in which it pays on your on your system. You can, uh, however, flush the cache. It's quite easy to do in, in your browser. It's slightly different from your browser, but you can you can do it in your browser. Help files will tell you how to do it, and then you've nothing left. So I haven't bugged you. I haven't left any virus on your system, anything like that. Well, it's a concern that people have. Anyway, yeah, you course, will... yeah. And then I suggest you just just go for a walk, uh, go for a dairy, whatever. There's one section where you can actually ask for suggestions as to where to go next. It, it's not as um, complex as what as, as your system, as Randonautica. Uh, what it does is it simply comes up with at random things like, you know, go left, go somewhere you don't want to go. Oh, uh, great. Something else. Um, so that's, um, that's broadly speaking. And you would then go around holding this thing and hopefully not looking at it all the time. The idea is not that you, you trip up over things because you're staring at your screen. I just, just had a comment from Paul Hazelhurst who says, I've tried a few experimental walks using WhatsApp during lockdown, but found the experience very fractured. Is this app any good for group drifts? Um, the answer is at the moment, no. At the moment, it treats you as a solitary individual. It doesn't relate you to anybody else who might be on the site at the time, but it's the intention to do so. Uh, the only problem there is you, you can run into privacy issues. You, know, you, may, you may not want other people to know where you are or what you're doing. Uh, but that's easy yeah. got by asking your permission. And what I would like to do uh, later on is to build it so that it can actually relate to people together, you know, so that if, if you ask a particular question, that's flashed over to your, your the other people are saying walk as you and so on. Uh, that's my 20 minutes. Uh, we haven't got any questions coming in at the moment. So just, just generally, Sebastian, I mean, well, of technology in 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 psychogeography, um, I made a joke about this. The other that I had to uh, appear on. It was now. It was it was some uh, uh, discussion again, a, a virtual one. Um, yeah, organised by the Computer Arts Society, and because I'm studying computational arts, which is you know art done with computers in in a more mm -hmm. technical way than just using uh, using Photoshop or something like that. 
Uh, and because I'm interested in psychogeography, I, I describe myself as a computational psychogeographer, which is enough of a mouthful. <laughs> I've never heard <laughs> it's possible. I've even invented the term, uh, uh, in which case I apologise. But it, it's a nice term. I'm a computational psychogeographer. Thank you very much. Um, but you know, do 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 you feel that that uh, devices and psychogeography fit together well? Yeah, it's a good question, isn't it? Of like. I think it's part of, I think, kind of your concern about um, not ensuring that people also invo become engaged in the walk itself and are not always on the screen. That's often quite a difficult thing to balance, I think, as, a, as an artist who then works with technology. Um, and I definitely think there is a place that technology has. Um, and, and I think just because of its abundance and its... Um, it's so used now that I think mm. we should be thinking more about, like all artists, we think about the form of like what we're using, um, mm. and kind of interrogate. How can a technology interrogate that mm. intention behind what we're interested in as artists? Uh, mm. Does it fit or does it work? Does it bring anything mm. interesting out of that? Um, mm. I mean, I, yeah. I mentioned Hazelhurst's comment the other just now that. Um, I've tried a few experimental walks using WhatsApp, but found the experience very fractured. Um, and, and, you know, this, this question of how you can present an experience in a way that isn't fractured, you know, just in the sense of how much time do you spend looking at your smartphone? Um, it, it's, uh, I made a, a system which I demonstrated at the last uh, conference, Congress, uh, which was actually a, a, a setup which uh, built around a, a Raspberry Pi which used lots and lots of sensors to measure things that were going on around you and then went on walks using that in the hope that it would tell me things that I couldn't notice. It wasn't very sophisticated, but it was interesting. Things like atmospheric pressure fluctuated enormously and you would find places where the local atmospheric pressure appeared to be very much different to what it was a few metres down the road. Now, whether this was just a machine problem or whether it was genuine, I don't mm. know. Uh, but it, that sort of thing. And, and, and again, the problem was you, you don't really want to walk you know, staring at something all the time. So I, I had a system of flashing lights on this one, which alerted you if anything was happening. Um, and but it was really more intended to um, uh, to be analysed afterwards, um, which again is something that you know. I mean, in theory, with the system I've got at the moment, since it is to some extent showing how people are reacting, and since you do have uh, their location, you might find that people reacted in a particular location in a, in a common way. Um, what's new about you know, there's some things people don't like and some things people do like most people when they see a beautiful view have a similar reaction uh, Tim Waters has just commented there is a psychogeophysics which uses sensors sometimes but not necessarily with computers um, that sounds interesting I must, I must research that Tim I'll, I'll, I'll have a word with you about that afterwards uh, I mean magnetic sensors are fascinating but they the, to use uh, magnetic sensors to pick up the Earth's magnetic field is extremely difficult and very expensive because you need very, very sensitive devices buried in the ground, I think. Um, the British Geological Society has three or four magnetic sensing stations in the UK and published their, their uh, results. And indeed, we've used the ones from es Eskdale Muir Station on, 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 the, uh, on the system. Um, but magnetism fascinates me, but it is a difficult thing to, to, to lay hold of. Um, firstly, to sense mm -hmm. it. Secondly, because mathematically it's quite complicated. You get into fast Fourier transforms and things like that, which I've never understood. <laughs> so you know, otherwise you just get a lot of information. Satya says, uh, it's a, yes. two of you have fragmented yourself into all these folks who are engaging with your respective apps. And walking through them, you get to be many. It's a good point. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm never quite sure about this concept of virtual collectivity, you know, um, to what extent are we now a group? You know, there, there are the two of us here and however many people are watching this uh, on Facebook and YouTube, to what extent are we a group? And we have to be a group in one sense because we've got a common purpose, we're, we're sharing a common space. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it is a thing that I, I must admit, and we were talking about this earlier, Sebastian, before we started this conversation, that. Um, we've all become so used to this kind of virtual interaction over the last few months, because particularly anybody who's involved in education or business is almost entirely living on Zoom or Microsoft Teams or something. 
Um, and um, it does generate a kind of virtual um, multiple personality, virtual gathering in some way, which is meaningful, I think, which is a whole area for exploration by artists amongst others. Yeah, I always think um, it's, I would say, I would say it's a miracle, but it's the fact we've, uh, we're we having a pandemic at this time. Um, mm. can you, I, I can't imagine how we would do, how businesses or this kind of communication would survive in like 1998. Um, mm. yeah. How it would be very different, how we would have uh, approached <clears throat> lockdown. Um, mm. So I'm both thankful for it, but then also... I was resistant to join the kind of um, Zoom revolution that seems to happen mm. with everyone mm. just trying to kind of directly translate their artistic practice into a Zoom webinar um, mm -hmm. without thinking, mm. how can there still be a live? What, how yes. close can we get to other people, but not, but not have any kind of physical touching or, yes. uh, dis or yeah. connection? Um, and I think now things are happening. I've seen people do things on doorsteps, um, like theatre on doorsteps, um, and walks. It seems like the walk as uh, mm. the kind of outdoor mm. ability to be together. Mm. That seems to be quite... People have kind of developed more outdoor um, vessels. Mm. Mm. It, it's very interesting because, I mean, in a sense, you know, digital art particularly demands a different way of, of showing itself. You, you know, you can't hang a digital artwork in a gallery. Uh, if, if you go yeah. back to the idea of uh, um, uh, Bitnik's uh, package from Mr. Sanji, you know, how do you display that? You don't. It happens. Um, you can you can uh, you can have ports of it, documentation of it, but the thing as an artwork just happened. And there ought to be digital ways of encountering these things. I think I spent a lot of time trying to work out to look for digital galleries, um, you know, to see how those would work. Um, have I lost you, Sebastian? I think I may have done. Oh, yeah. Great, sorry. Ah, again. Joyce being on the phone. Um, <laughs> great. It's like something this pops up and you accidentally click the wrong thing and then you're like, oh, no, I've just disappeared. Great. Um, yeah. Which is, again, interesting because normally in a conversation we're so used to like, not disappearing halfway through yeah. physical space. But now, yeah. Anyway. I, mean, um, this, sorry, this, I, this, I, I was just thinking this, this um, actually just demonstrates that one of the big problems still of digital technology is it is a bit flaky. Um, nobody's quite yeah. how to use it. It all depends ultimately on your broadband connection, uh, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I had a nightmare the other day where I was in a meeting where I, I could uh, I could be seen but I couldn't be heard. <laughs> it's amazing how that yeah. completely destroys normal relationships. You know, yeah. um, it is very difficult to cope. You end up writing things on a piece of paper and holding them up. You know? um, <laughs> like some kind of hostage. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there, there is yeah. a uh, uh, note, a question from a, somebody called Facebook user. Uh, yes. Said, Please post links to your sites and projects here. Um, Great. If you're there, could you, uh, could you do that for me? Yes, I think I'm trying to figure out how I do. Well, Sonia, Sonia can do it, I think. She's, she's yeah. Uh, I... Anyway, there's certainly links to our. Um, Sites and projects are in the the conference documentation. So you'll find it on on the 4WCMP website, uh, and uh, you know you're very welcome to uh, explore those. Mm -hmm. uh, my um, uh, site is is actually my my sort of main artistic website, a particular page yeah, of it. Great. Good. Well, I think that's fifty minutes. I think we've uh, yeah, just we've covered. Yeah. Are there any more questions from anybody watching, or any comments from anybody watching? Thank Have you, you just... for being here and um, joining us this morning. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Out there yeah. In the, the world. And uh, yeah, you deserve a special medal because I know normally um, uh, these conferences, when they're physical conferences, ah, here, there are our uh, uh, links. Yeah, going. There we go. Great. Um, normally these conferences start at something like 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. So it, it, it's really admirable that people have actually got up for a nine o'clock start. I, I, because you're not in Huddersfield, but so perhaps it's easier. But um, yes, to join with Sebastian, just saying thank you very much for for um, thank, you. Yes, thank you very much for your questions. I think we'll sign off.